give uh, our CFL uh, for a warm Economic Club of Florida welcome. Dave, thank you. That was very kind. Uh, I'm afraid that our time slot at 7 p.m. Friday has expired. Uh, the uh, what a pleasure to be with you. As a, uh, as a Gator grad, uh, I have now reached the pinnacle of my career to be speaking at the Alumni Hall of Florida State University. Where do I go from here? Uh, we have not had the invitation from the University of Miami. Uh, the, uh, Governor Mixon, good to be with you. Uh, Chief Justice Hardy, good to be with you. And uh, thank you for the privilege of being present with you today. I'd like to tell a story today, and I was asked to be efficient. I know we're on a tight timeline, and I want to be sure I leave time for your questions. Uh, they're always the most important part of an exchange such as this. So in, in my effort to be efficient as your state CFO, I have, I have brought one slide to show you today. It's actually a slide that I will animate to take across time, because what I'd like to share with you today is the story of decision making. And, and my take on this is, uh, as was mentioned earlier, my entire career until most recently was in the banking industry. So I had the high honor of knocking on your door, calling on you, trying to win your business, and competing against other players that were doing the same. In that, of course, across every industry, whether it was retail or wholesale, manufacturing, real estate development, whatever it might have been, I saw individuals sacrifice, persevere, with all the innovation and the courage they could possess to build and create something. They all had a brand. They all had a niche that they were trying to exploit. Government has a, a similar responsibility. What is our value proposition? Do we deliver? Do we hold ourselves as accountable as a player in the private marketplace to have achieved what the shareholders, or in our case, the taxpayers, would have expected from allowing us this brief moment in time to serve? And so I'd like to tell you a little story today. And that story is going to be about, Florida is going to be about, Florida is one of 50 states. Florida competes for capital, intellectual capital, those future innovators, those who will dream big and create the next breakthrough. By their ideas, they will attract others who are innovators and creators. It is financial capital that we wish to seek. Those who would choose to make their investment here, will they send the next plant to Florida, who are we competing with? Where will the next job be created? So today I'd like to just share with you some data points. And do they tell a story in the end about the decision making that takes place in government? Because I believe the same thing is true. As a bank president, I was in charge of those investors, very precious resources that they gave to me to build an enterprise of value. So today, and as your CFO, I have a similar responsibility. What's been extracted from your pocket or from your business model, how has it been deployed in a way that creates value, creates greater opportunity in the future, delivers an ex extraordinary education system, safe streets? That's the story I'd like to tell today. I'll have to be quick. So I've got a slide for you. And let me begin this conversation. My thought is, clearly the, the premise of my conversation is that fiscal discipline will attract capital. It is not the only part of the story, but it's a big part of the story. Because the players in the future who choose a place to go will choose the place that they believe is disciplined and is careful with how they deploy my resources. So let me just share with you what we have here on this, on this graph. And this is it. On what is the y-axis, or what I would call being a lover of baseball, the third baseline uh, is net tax supported state debt as a percentage of personal income. And, and what that just means, of all the debt in the state that the state, that the state has to pay back, that we have borrowed on your behalf, that is supported by all the personal income that exists in the state today. That is, that is a ratio that we have stacked up against everybody what have we borrowed as a capacity of all the population's personal income? On the x-axis, or the first baseline, is what you have taxes as on a per capita basis. And for us, in the state of Florida, we are more of a consumption-driven state. Others 
would be a maybe a more personal income tax driven state but whatever it is so in florida that line would mean consumption tax or sales tax it would mean corporate taxes it would mean licensing and fees to have reached uh, your professional credentials everything divided by the number of individuals in the state of florida so this is 2004 this is where all states are plotted. All 50 states are on this graph. The size of the bubble that you see is an indication of its debt as a percentage of the personal income. That's, the, that's what the size of the bubble would mean on this graph. The color does not mean anything at this point. It will on a future graph. So you can see at this moment in time in 2004 where all states would have been on this chart. Florida at this moment would have had a debt to income ratio of about three and a half percent and it would have taxes on a per capita basis of about two thousand and thirty dollars that's where we are in 2004. i could have picked another year i just want to give you 10 years of following what decision making has done and where states have gone and what the marketplace is reacting to those decisions that have been made so now i'd like to just share with you where would our peer states be in any industry, again, I would assume in whatever your industry may be, it certainly was, those of us in banking, I always stacked myself up at the end of every quarter. What was my market share? What was my growth? How's my profitability? How am I looking on a peer basis? So I want to give you, these are the states that would be our size. They're dealing with similar complexities. Hawaii is obviously not in our peer group, uh, but I wanted to show them because I assume somebody would ask, who's the big bright green bubble? Uh, and because the, the, the theme of this conversation is capital will move to the place it is the most rewarded. An interesting thing about this slide is it's obviously by culture and geography harder to take your capital off the island of Hawaii. And Hawaii may behave differently and can behave a little differently in its fiscal decision making. But here you have our peer states, states of similar size, states that are dealing with similar diversity and complexities that we may deal with and you can see where we're at. I'd like you to just note though how tight, you wouldn't know it at the time, but as I animate this slide, you're going to see at this moment in time, 10 years ago, that on a per capita tax basis, all of our peer group, group with the exception of Texas, was really pretty well in line between that $2,000 and $3,000 on a per capita basis. In that column, you can also see where we would have been, all have been on a particular, on that debt to uh, personal income ratio. Now again, I think you, get the, you can already start to see something here. Isn't it interesting that when you put all 50 states only on these two data points, how they begin to create some clustering that's taking place here. And uh, now as, as decisions are gonna be made, you'll see how the states have chosen to deal with those issues. I'm about to push the button here and this slide is going to begin to move across time. 2004 in the background will become 2005, 2006, but what you're going to see is each of these bubbles begin to start moving. They will move based upon the decisions of the public policy makers that were made and economic conditions at that time. So when the slide starts to move, this is just the spoiler alert, you'll begin to see in 2005, 2006, in a strong economy, that was taking place during these times. As personal household income was growing, a percentage of that to those states that were taxing on personal income, a greater sense of revenue would have been going to that state, a higher, higher, higher top line revenue. If it was a consumption state, the more people were making, the more they may have bought more furniture, more clothing, that revenue would have flowed to the state. The same might be true uh, on, on, on the movement of debt. Now, what's gonna happen though, this slide is going to run untouched until it gets to 2010. You'll start to see the reaction when we start moving into some more stressful fiscal times. And that would be individuals start behaving differently. When they don't have that personal income, they're not buying. Consumption obviously on a per capita basis, consumption tax will begin to, be, will begin to decline. If people have lost their job in personal income driven states, that's revenue that's not coming in on a per capita basis. You'll see how that happens. So let me just take you on this walk now. Watch what is happening across time, how states are reacting to the marketplace. Here we go. 
So things are moving pretty well. You can see income is growing, people are buying things, taxing is obviously happening by the fact that they're out buying and consumption. Now, things begin to contract. Challenges in the marketplace. People are losing their job. They're not able to make the decisions they once want, made, were making. So here I bring you to 2010. I want to just share with you for us on this slide what happened between 2006 and 2010. You can see where we're at. In 2006, top line revenue for the state of Florida was just shy of $28 billion, all in $28 billion. The median price of a home that year in Florida was $258,000. 365,000 people moved to Florida in 2006. We had a 3.5% unemployment rate in 2006. On any given day, there were 50,000 homes on the market from a willing seller. If I had gathered every realtor magazine in the state and, and put it on one desk, you would have found 50,000 homes were on the market on any given day, and we had a five-month supply of inventory. 2010, just to give you a sense now of where we found ourselves four years later. Top line revenue was not 28 billion, it was just about 21 billion dollars for the state. So seven billion dollars of top line revenue had evaporated. The average price of a home was not 258, it was 119. It was not 50,000 homes on the market, it was 500,000 homes in foreclosure. It was not 365,000 people moving to Florida, it was 20,000 people moving to Florida. The unemployment rate was not 3.5%, it was 10 on its way to 11.5%. It wasn't a five month supply of inventory, it was a 19 month supply of housing inventory. And 800,000 people had lost their job in our state. So here's where we find ourselves. Now, the question is, what do you do? In every state, just like every enterprise, everybody in your industry has choices to make. And, and this is kind of important to the whole conversation because you're going to ask yourself, how do you solve the problem? Now, I just would like to give you a perspective that we, uh, we pursued here in Florida. It's not a partisan conversation. It's a philosophical conversation, to be sure, because now everyone is faced with the same challenge, not uniquely ours. And in fact, the entire world was in a global recession at this moment. So the question would be, do we solve the problem on our books? $7 billion has evaporated. Or do we realize that top line revenue is an indicator of consumer confidence and overall market dynamics? In our state, if somebody goes and feels they can buy furniture, 6% of that cost comes to us. If they don't buy furniture, 6% of that cost does not come to us. So we could look at this as, I've got to solve the problem on my books today, or I could say, what could I do to create the occasion that the marketplace could find its footing and its confidence? And as it begins to get its, feeding, its feet under it again, we would start to see some change. Others may say, no, we're going to solve the problem on our books. We're going to go find revenue no matter where we can find it. What will be the impact on the economy that they're overseeing to extract more from a marketplace that has nothing left to give? Those are the kind of questions that you find yourself in. So now I'm gonna animate the slide again. Our choice was pretty clear. We, over this period of time, have reduced taxes a significant number of times so that every dollar could stay in the hands of the small business owner that we could figure out. Reducing manufacturing sales taxes, for instance. Um, reducing, uh, increasing the exemption on a small business owner to not pay us any, any corporate taxes. Hire another employee, buy a piece of equipment with it. Um, so as I animate this slide to bring you forward now to the last year that I have, the data for 2013, hopefully soon I'll have 14, you're sitting far enough away from the slide that I'd like you to put your eyeballs, or two eyeballs, in two different places. With one eye, watch the orange dot of Florida, and with the other eye, watch what's happening with the rest of the slide, all the other bubbles. And here we go. Debt, more debt, more debt, now more taxes. The orange dot didn't move. Over that period of time, 43 states 
raised taxes on a per capita basis more than $100. 30 states raised their debt. 26 states did both. No state now in this slide has a lower tax on a per capita basis than the state of Florida. Our, what was once uh, $2,030 on a per capita basis is now about $1,600. And what was once about a 3.5% debt ratio is now um, about 2.5%. And look at, remember I talked about that column, look where people have moved and how they have now separated to where other states in, in an interest to deal with what they thought was an issue in their state chose to raise their revenue rather than let the marketplace have a chance to deploy the revenue that they could find to the best of their ability to maintain their business enterprises. That's rises. That's what's taking place over this three-year period. Now, um, what happens here is that the marketplace now makes decisions, and that's really now going to be the point of the story, is what does the market now say when they see this taking place? Those who would judge us externally, um, those who, in fact, would rate our debt, what do they have to say about how we're doing here? How about households? What are they doing as they're watching this unfold over this period of time? So I'd like to show you that. What I can say as of this ending of this year, as the, the US Chamber of Commerce, as was mentioned, identified Florida had more business birth than any other state in the union during this period. Um, the, the private marketplace created 800,000 jobs during this period, not government. Uh, during this period, CEO Magazine would rank us the second best place that they would choose to expand their business would be to the state of Florida second only to the state of Texas. The Tax Foundation felt that we were a top five state in tax policy that could attract capital. Those things all published externally from us. Let me just show you though, an important player in all of this, Standard & Poor's looks at and would rate uh, the debt of all of these players, all 50 players. And I'd like to share with you that if you would see the bright green dot, Standard & Poor's has, has weighed and judged and decided that state is a AAA rated state. If it is a, a tan colored bubble, that would be one of the 33 states that is determined as a AA rated state. And if it's red, it is a single A rated state. Let me just make this clear. Uh, some of us live in this world. Some of you may have much more exciting lives. Um, <laughs> green matters because Green means that less money is extracted from your business model to pay for the debt that we believed was necessary. Red is troubling. Uh, the, any one of you that would go buy a car this afternoon, somebody would pull your credit score. Imagine this is the same. And the higher your credit score, the better deal you're going to get. The lower your credit score, the more you're going to pay. That's the same here. And when you pay more for this purpose, you have less for a teacher, you have less for a highway patrol officer. That's the point. So at this point in time, there are now 15 states with a AAA credit rating. Your state is one of them. Let me just show you, because I know you're anxiously awaiting. This would be our peer group. Uh, Texas is the only state that would share a AAA credit rating as among our peers. Uh, uh, New Jersey and New York are AA rated state. Illinois and California are single A. Again, let me just state this. You cannot become a single A state on a bad quarter. Uh, S&P does not judge so frivolously. It takes years of irrational and irresponsible behavior to be downgraded to single A. These two states have accomplished uh, that. Uh, regrettably, because somewhere uh, shortly a group will gather of business owners in their states and they are living with this on their back. And that is the, the real tragedy of this. Because later you're going to see, how do you undo this at this point? The decisions you have made have burdened you now with things you may not be able to do for a long, long time. So here you have it. What does it matter? Um, and this is just going to be a rule of thumb. Many, many, many ingredients will come into the, the ultimate rating of your, of, your, uh, of your issuance, but on a, on a, uh, uh, a difference between a triple A AAA and a double A, maybe 20 to 25 basis points on a particular borrowing. A triple A AAA to a single A, maybe 80 to 85 points on a particular borrowing. And when you're borrowing billions of dollars, it matters. 
So I could just give you one particular example. At this point, Florida, and just moments ago, and I have not had the benefit of reviewing the veto list. It may be a question coming shortly. I have not had the benefit to review the world record veto list that came out about an hour ago. Uh, but I would tell you that um, we, are, we just passed a $79 billion budget. As you know, at the end of last year, we surpassed New York and became the third most populous state in the union. So now we are a state larger on population than the state of New York. We have a $79 billion budget. Their budget, for now fewer citizens, is $155 billion. I cannot explain the difference, and that's not why you invited me. But I could tell you that we have $24 billion of tax-supported state debt, and New York has $55 billion. If New York had our debt ratio and had our credit rating, they would save $1.3 billion. This is an estimate, a $1.3 billion in annual debt service. That is about 38,000 K through 12 teachers every single year. Not just one year. This is debt service now every year. They have built into their state budget. It is about 62 elementary schools that could be built every year with that money. It is 320 miles of highway that could be built with that money. But this is a choice that has been made over time that puts them in this situation. Okay, so this is how the external world, and if I'm about to deploy capital, I'm going to say to myself, where do I take that capital? What burden will later some state place upon me to make good on the, on the trouble that is already created for itself? And I'm going to look to a state that is not going to be sharing its burdens with me because of historical, irrational, or somewhat irresponsible decision making that lack fiscal discipline. So here it is. Let me now show you what we call adjusted gross income. Again, if you're leading a more exciting life than myself, I'll just offer a little insight here. What this simply means is uh, to make this, uh, when you file your taxes at the end of the year, uh, what is your top line household income? That's kind of a way to look at this. Um, adjusted gross income. And what this slide is telling you is which states over the last 15 years have received adjusted gross income? That simply means that where was Jeff Atwater living 10 years ago and where is he living now? And let's just take the adjusted gross income he once had and find out where that state is now benefiting from that adjusted gross income. So I'm just showing you over the last 10 to 15 years where adjusted gross income has moved. And you can see that if it's, let me call it, for lack of a better description, the purple dot, where you see Florida, are the states that are the winners. That is where household income has moved. That's where people have chose to go. If your dot is the darker dot, you are the loser. People said, enough, I'm out of here. I will go someplace else, and I'm taking my income with me. Is some of this movement retirement? Yes, it is, of course. But this is adjusted gross top line household income. This is also innovators and creators and active workers who have left, who have moved, who have chosen someplace different. So let me just show you who are our peers in this. Uh, you can see that the winning states are Florida and Texas in our peer group where, where household income has chosen to go. And the states that are the donor states now are New Jersey, New York, California, Illinois, on that graphic that's been inserted on the left-hand side, the top four winning states, Florida at 105 billion, and then you can see down to Texas at 26 billion. The next would have been Nevada at 21 billion. Uh, so those next four states under Florida, all added together, would have achieved Florida's number. The losing 80 billion out of New York over this 15-year period. California, 51 billion dollars lost. Why does this slide matter? I think it's probably obvious, but 70% of all economic activity in an economy starts when a consumer reaches for their wallet. So when you'll hear the term on the news, how's the GDP doing? How is the gross domestic product doing? It starts when I buy a set of tires, when 
I buy a couch, when I buy windshield wipers. That's economic activity. But it doesn't happen if I don't have personal income. Everything starts there. You cannot expect your economy to grow when you are giving your economy to somebody else. That's what's happening on, that's what you're seeing on the slide. And again, just as you saw with the credit ratings from external eyes, there is a statistical clustering that takes place in the lower left-hand corner because those, again, same players who would say, I'm going to relocate, I'm going to take a chance, I'm going to go someplace that someplace believes in me and take a risk, I'm going to one of these states that is more disciplined. <coughs> That's just happening. It's not just conversation. This is, for Florida, $12,000 a minute, $17 million a day, $6.5 billion a year coming here to grow our economy. Now, let me just put them both together. The states with the highest credit rating, where corporations will be looking to see who is being disciplined, are clustered in the lower left-hand corner when combined with the states that are the recipients of gross income from the household. It seems to be, again, a rather clear statistical sampling. Capital will go where capital is treated well. Um, now, who is this? Florida, Georgia, Texas, North Carolina. It is not a climate thing. It is not a southern thing. The, we did not chart temperature on here. We, we charted fiscal discipline on here. So it is very philosophical. Over these past 10 years, the decision making that has taken place in these states have shared a philosophy that we would not solve our problem based upon our books getting fixed ahead of the household's books getting fixed. And that has demonstrated how the marketplace has looked upon where it would go and the choices it would make. So um, then um, I, I just take you back to here for the, for the last slide. If you think about these red circles that are losing households rapidly and taking with them their buying power, how do these states turn this around? The choice, you know, what, the, what, what Standard & Poor's is looking for is some structural balance. Do you have the revenue to support this debt? If you don't, are you going to go raise taxes to get the revenue and chase another 100,000 people out? Are you going to raise debt to pay more bills and not raise taxes? that you can't pay back? These folks are now, by no accident, but by thoughtful, conscientious choice in the situation that they are in, just as the states in the lower left-hand corner are in the position they are in because of choices that were made thoughtfully and carefully. Uh, so the, the point is, none of this is an accident. Um, and the beneficiary will be those who choose where they can best live out their hopes and their dreams and their capacity to achieve. And I believe it is our responsibility to create the conditions that can best attract that intellectual capital and that financial capital for our economy to prosper. Um, so, Dave, that would be it. If, if there's time for questions, uh, I would be happy to, to take a shot at some. You just mentioned that. Uh, thank you, sir. But we must diversify ourselves into life sciences, into energy, into manufacturing, and those things you see being seeded every year, but it does take time to diversify an economy. But it would be a mistake for us to think this kind of economic international recession is not going to come again. How deep will the fall be? Can we think ahead to minimize that impact and to create a greater, more broadly sound economic structure in Florida, that is our responsibility. Yeah. Uh, well, let me just say, I, uh, I, I was very fortunate uh, to attend a university school, and like many of you uh, in this room, uh, mowed lawns, delivered a morning paper, uh, washed dishes and all those things to do that, and mine was the University of Florida, but I want to say, uh, I have a daughter who is a freshman here at Florida State University, and she has taught me how to do this. It's hard. I have worked on this, but uh, 
So we are not a house divided, we're a house united for, uh, for all Florida universities. As a politician, let me get that. <laughs> <laughs> Anything? Is that good? David, thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, give it up for you. Yeah, thank you. With that, uh, uh, our meeting stands adjourned. Have a great day.